All right, trippers, so today we are headed to a town that lives life on the edge. It blurs the lines between what is Texas and what is not. It's a town so grande that not even an international border can contain it. Vamanos to Laredo! <laughs> This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Right on the border with our good neighbor is Laredo. All alone except for, oh well, Mexico. Plus bobcats, scorpions, coyotes. Anyway, it's three hours from either Del Rio or McAllen and about two and a half from San Antonio or Corpus. Remember, Texas is big and this drive only proves it. Now Laredo is no small town, but one of our grand gateway cities to Mexico. It's home to about a quarter million people and connected by just a short bridge to another 300,000 in its sister city of Nuevo Laredo. But truthfully, you don't have to hop the border to feel like you're already visiting another country. Since the border into Mexico has become a little less safe, Americans aren't going that way as much. So the businesses have come this way. They got all these Mexican imports, all the bright colors, words that I cannot pronounce. We're currently on San Bernardo Avenue, a retail and dining district where it's nearly impossible to tell which side of the Rio Grande we're on. Anybody need a six foot tall rooster? <laughs> or, a, or, or a 10 foot tall purple dinosaur? I'll pick you up one right now. And no place better epitomizes the beauty of border shopping than Basket and Pottery Alley. This brings back memories because <laughs> I can remember hopping the border as a little kid. We would go to Mexico and we would go to the markets and they felt basically exactly like this. Aisles full of cluttered objects, things hanging from the ceiling. Oh. If it had the full suit to go with it, I would buy this in a heartbeat. A pink, a crushed oh, pink yeah. velvet. Have you ever seen a pink mariachi? I'd be the only one. Seriously, this is stuff you can't find in just a normal import store. Nor would I want to buy it in a normal import store. Only in Laredo. This stuff is a steal. You could get this flamingo for only $8. All right, I am a father to little girls. And I usually am not a sucker for stuff like this, but that is thinking cute. I've got to buy something. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'm going to get the boot. This must be bought today. I don't think that's a good, uh, oh, okay. Nope. Someone's gonna have to find another car to ride home in. Looks like someone just got booted out of the car. But I'm Now, as you can probably imagine, the food on San Bernardo is pretty increíble. And one joint whose legend spans both sides of the border is the great Taquitos Ravi. Time for lunch. Oh, man, I love a good local institution. It's taco time. It's not Tuesday, but hey, every day is Taco Tuesday in Laredo. Let's find a place to sit. Opened 40 years ago across the border in Nuevo Laredo by Senor Ravi himself, this place now has three stateside locations, all run by his sons and family, who continue his taco tradition of crafting up some of the city's freshest and tastiest tacos, tortas y tostadas. It's a full menu of goodness, making me realize I really need to work on my Spanish. And I am so glad that menu has pictures, let me tell you. Come on, Chet, you're a Texan man. You should know some, some of those. Hey, it's been a long time since Spanish, all right? I do know the word tacos, but here they're called taquitos. You know a place is legit when the menu has things like tripas, molleja, pastor. Yeah, I might need some help. Let's call in the interpreter. Typical non-Spanish speaking dumb questions. Que es ternera? Ternera, it's like shredded meat. Shredded meat? Yes. Okay. And melanesa? A steak. Like, it's like steak. a steak. Okay. And chop it. That sounds delicious. A fajita, a tripita, and mollejita. What is tripita? Is it cartilage or intestine? Yes. Intestine. Intestine, yeah. I love a good intestine taco. <laughs> That's really good. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to get one of them. I'm not really sure what I ordered at all. I know I've got some tacos coming. There's going to be meat on them. They're going to be in tortillas, and it's going to be delicious. That's all I need to know. Oh, yes. Oh, 
I don't know where to start. I guess chorizo queso is a uh, appetizer. I'm going in right there. Uh, ha, ha. Get on this tortilla, little buddy, and you're going in my mouth. This alone is worth coming to Laredo for. Here we go, house specialty, pastor. You know, you gotta hammer them with lime. Cilantro, a little bit of fresh onion in there. Dude, that was awesome. I don't know what makes the pastor meat bright red. It's good, so I just eat that. This is the really interesting one. Tripas, deep fried intestines. Ooh, that's good. And like these little flavor punches of fried crispy. Nice. This one right here is Milanesa taco. And not too long ago, it was listed as one of Texas Monthly's tacos that you have to eat before you die. Let me see if I agree. Oh, they were very ripe. You know what these taste like? Like really amazing street tacos, but served inside of a restaurant. There's a reason this place has been in Laredo for like 40 years now. These are some of the most amazing ones I've had. All right, lunch is done. And while some pan dulce or other Mexican sweets could definitely do the trick, well, I got something else in mind before we leave San Bernardo. There is this, I don't know what to call it, a drink, a dessert that they make here in Laredo. So we're headed to Las Amorosas. It's called a piña preparada. It's crafted in beer barns just like this one, and it looks like this. Here we go. <laughs> How do you eat it? Slowly. <laughs> <laughs> this is like one of the most un-road trip friendly foods on the planet, but it's served in a car. <laughs> it's got strawberries, apples, gummy bears, oranges, uh, gummy ribbon things. Poured into it goes the beverage of your choice. And since we're driving, well, we're doing a little pineapple soda. <sighs> Refreshing. <laughs> got that little bit of like a Luca salt spice on it. Let's go. Me and my pina preparata in the open road. Woohoo! Like this giant pineapple, Laredo is a very colorful and vibrant city. It's also one of Texas's most historic cities. Today, this downtown district marks the heart of Webb County. But go back 250 years, and Laredo was just a simple Spanish settlement built on the Rio Grande River, centered around this historic plaza. We are in the heart of Laredo not more than maybe a quarter mile from the Rio Grande River. I mean, a lot of the buildings predate the Republic of Texas. We're talking 1700s, 1800s. It's absolutely crazy. There's the San Agustin Cathedral built in 1872, Casa Ortiz built in 1830, and La Posada Hotel, which used to be the old high school. And this amazing history is why people love to walk the streets of Laredo. Kind of reminds me of a song, you know? What's that? I I spy a young cowboy. He's wrapped all in white linen. He's wrapped in white linen and cold as the clay. I see by your outfit that you are a cowboy. These words he did say as I boldly walked by. Come sit down beside me and hear my sad story. I'm shot in the breast, and I know I must. <sighs> oh, beat the drum slowly, and play the fife lowly. He was a young cowboy, but now he is gone. <laughs> You know, I've always wanted to sing that song on the actual streets of Laredo. Bucket list. Now, as I described, Laredo feels like its own country, caught somewhere between Texas and Mexico. And believe it or not, at one point, this area was its own country. The Republic of the Rio Grande, and this museum building was its capital. This is Andrea Ordenez with the Webb County Heritage Foundation. Get ready for one of the most untold stories in Texas history. This building served as several things. It was a home for a really long time. It was part of the Loreto High School and an elementary school. But most importantly, it was the capital building for the Republic of the Rio Grande. That's really cool. And this is a story I really knew nothing about, that there was this whole other country that wasn't Texas or Mexico that was existing right here along the Rio Grande. Yes. This map will help. It's 1836, and the Mexican state of Tejas looks like this, with the Rio Grande settlements all through here. 
Now, when the Texas Revolution broke out, it happened up here in Texas. And after the Texans won, well, Sam Houston said, Texas now goes to the Rio Grande. Well, of course, Santa Ana felt differently. Oh, no, Texas stops at the Nuestras River. And the people in the middle, like Laredo, were just confused. They hadn't really participated in the Texas Revolution up there, but they hated Santa Ana down there. So in 1840, they followed Texas's lead, declaring their own independence with a new country made up of Coahuila, Nueva Leon, and Tamaulipas. It was the Republic of the Rio Grande. And the Republic of the Rio Grande was inspired by the Republic of Texas. Got if it. you can see this flag, the Republic of the Rio Grande flag is very, very similar to the Texas flag. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. So why didn't the Republic last? There was a lot of disputes among the people that were part of the Republic of the Rio Grande. So it's a story about strength and honor and also betrayal. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a really good Hollywood movie, yes, right? Yes. As they say, a country divided cannot stand. And just 11 short months later, Mexico conquered the Republic. But even that fall didn't kill this area's sense of independent national pride. This Capitol building stands as a testament to that spirit, with rooms filled with items from the period of the Republic. Hey, you know, thinking about the Republic period of Texas, it was very rough, like, you know, log cabins and things like that. But, you know, based on these rooms, this Republic period, which is at the same time, was a little more advanced, maybe because it was closer to Mexico. It seems like it was more artisan than frontiersmen, which is very cool. And while the country may have been short-lived, the story of bravely standing up to an evil dictator and risking your life for independence is a story for the ages. Now, Laredo did become part of Texas and eventually the U.S., but just because you tell people they're now part of a new country, well, that doesn't mean they believe it. No, no, the people must choose allegiance, which is exactly what Laredo has done, going from a border town caught in the middle to the home of the largest George Washington birthday celebration in America. Didn't see that one coming, did you? Luckily, there's a museum down here dedicated to the celebration. And here's president of the George Washington Association, Eddie Villarreal. Right now, as of today, we have, what, 28 events in 33 days. But so this is a month-long celebration? At least a month long, if not more. There's a parade, air show, jalapeno eating contest, tequila tasting, and a ceremonial hug on the bridge with Mexico. But one of the true signature events is the Martha Washington Ball, where graduating seniors don the most incredible dresses. Handmade? Uh, yes, they're all handmade. Wow. All made, hand beaded, everything. Yeah. It's not inexpensive, it is expensive. Oh, I, I, I have no doubt are, it. How much was one of these cost? Oh, I, they can range upward of 15 to 50,000. Oh, that's how some of these... So you gotta be all in. You gotta yeah, you love gotta, Martha Washington. You gotta be all in. Not to mention the physical strength, as these dresses can weigh a hundred pounds. It's awesome. Is, it, is there it's a winner awesome. of that pageant? No, it's just, uh, there. it's like... It's um, like the coming out. Exactly. I'm sure this is exactly what George had in mind when he fought the bloody British. Oh, let's not forget about the Princess Pocahontas pageant. This is a little different because they actually have to compete to be Pocahontas in chief. There's wow. other women that do these dresses, and uh, they, they do a great job. If you notice, from toe to the, to the tip of their oh, of their headdresses, man. their headdresses are incredibly heavy. I know some that weigh 20, 30 pounds on their head. Oh, oh. The, the, the beading, and then it, when it dangles, it makes these designs. Goodness. Now, you may be wondering how all of this got started. Well, it dates back to 1898, when a fraternity known as the Order of Redmen came to Laredo to promote Washington. They put on this play in the middle of town. There was a shootout, a gold key, and well, rather than just tell you, I thought we would reenact it for you. And fortunately, I brought costumes. Okay, everybody, let's get into position. Townsfolk in the middle, Indians get off stage, Pocahontas go to the wilderness. And opening curtain. It's a beautiful day in Laredo. Townspeople were just sort of standing around doing all sorts of different things when suddenly, from the wilderness, there attacked the native Indian tribes. There was bloodshed everywhere. But in the end, the native Indians were victorious. And although defeated, the mayor decided that as an act of peace, he would present to the chief a golden key to the city. But this was no regular chief. The chief was actually George Washington. And in an ultimate act of unselfish leadership, George presents the golden key to Princess Pocahontas. 
come out, she comes out of the wilderness to the town of Laredo, where she receives the golden key from the great George Washington. Take a bow, George, you've done it. You have secured the future of Laredo for generations to come. They will celebrate your name here on the Texas border. Well done, everybody. Take five and we'll get back on the road. I'm really proud of y'all. This made no sense at all. That's how it actually happened. That was the play. I like my dress. Well, thanks, I'm glad. You don't get to keep well, it. Hottis isn't even close to Laredo. Well, neither was George Washington. It's all right. Take five and we'll be back on the road. And fold your costumes. Don't just throw them in the Tupperware like you always do. Richie, I'm looking at you. I'm serious. My mom also made some of them. And don't disrespect my mom by just throwing it in a pile in the floorboard of the Suburban. My mom's better than that. Did that help anybody? Uh, maybe not. But it did help a town on the border embrace its new American identity. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. Speaking of the border, while many may have crossed at a time or two, well, we're going to get a different vantage point that few have ever seen down on the border itself by paddling the Rio Grande River. And of course, when my buddy Brandon heard we were going to paddle the Rio Grande, well, he couldn't miss out. But our real guides today are Tom Miller and Dr. Tom Vaughn of the Laredo Community College. So, Tom, what, what do you have in store for us today? Well, we're going to do a run from uh, Father Macnabo here down to Markley Street. Okay. It's about four miles. We see unique vegetation. Of course, all the way we're going to be seeing wonderful birds. Now, am I right? That's Mexico. That's Mexico. Right here. Absolutely. <laughs> and, cool. you know, and you can see right here, you aren't, we aren't even going to see the towns. We'll be on the river. There won't be anybody around. Oh, you know, that's it's cool. It's really interesting. We shouldn't see anybody except for the ones who are always watching. And if you ever wonder whether or not this uh, river was safe, look, here's Border Patrol. It's good to know that, that we're being watched. Yeah. It's usually yeah. not a good thing. Down here, that's a good thing. Yeah. A lot of airboats. They've got drones. They've got sensors. We're being scanned on a camera right now. They have a great presence here. I mean, I, uh -huh. we, I, I never really feel unsafe. Uh huh. That might surprise many of you. But the Rio Grande is definitely open for exploring, as long as you're not doing anything bad. This doesn't even register as something that could be done. Yeah. Go paddle the Rio Grande. No, you can't. That's like fence and chains and barbed wire and... You got an international border. That's always a cool thing. Yeah. And then you got some of the best birding. That birding is one of the main reasons we're here. Over 300 species have been recorded on this river. Ooh, a heron up in the tree. Great blue heron. Oh look, you had all oh yeah, the great blue heron. Oh look at that. The great egret and the snowy. Is egret the snowy that small one there? The small one is the snowy. Okay. What's hanging out at the top of this tree? It looks like it's got a white breast. Okay, oh, yeah. No, you got an osprey. Oh, cool. What's the blackbird with the little red spot on those it? Those are the red winged blackbird. Okay, well there's one of those. Yeah. Every year is there like a uh, an unexpected X Factor bird that shows up? Absolutely. Something Absolutely. that yes. has never been yes. seen down here yet? Yes. Well, we, we've been blessed this year. Last November, we had a blue bunting that was here for about 10 days. 2,000 people saw that bird. In it, 10 days, 2,000 yeah. people? To drop it. everything they're going to do and come to Laredo to see this bird. They're obsessed with yeah. just checking that yeah. box checking, off that list. Getting huh? that one done. That's wow. It. Birders going to bird. Anytime, any place. A lot of times when we take the people out, it's just, you know, part of it is just being on the river. You know, they, they can brag that they've been on the Rio Grande, you know, with <laughs> yeah. all, all the stuff going on, you know. And I've been coming to Laredo since I was a little kid. This is the first time I've ever done it. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's hard to believe that this right here, U.S., that right there, Mexico. All right, I think when you get right in the, the middle of the river, so right now, the front of the canoe is in Mexico. I'm in Mexico, yeah. and you're in the U.S. There you go. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's awesome. There aren't many rivers in the world where you can do that. Okay, Manada's Creek is just ahead, and uh, it's going to be our, our scenic interlude. So one of the only places I've ever seen ferns growing in Webb County. <laughs> Wasn't as smooth as I thought it would be. Cane. And without introduction, here's the Border Patrol. It's so crazy. 
You have no idea they're there, but the Border Patrol is everywhere. We just turn the corner, come back in here, and there's an <laughs> airboat with three of them on it. <laughs> hey, they're just keeping us safe, which I appreciate. The birding is incredible on this creek. We've seen three varieties of kingfishers. Also, beauties like the green jay, not to mention super rarities like the white-collared seed eater. But more than seeing these awesome birds, well, I'm just happy to be down here on the river to experience firsthand one of the most misunderstood and irrationally feared waterways in Texas. It's almost surreal being out here on the Rio Grande. I mean, truthfully, one of Texas's great rivers. And there's no shortage of talk about it, but being out here actually on it is a totally different thing. You know, this is our river. It's also our neighbor's river as well. We share it, but, but it just takes kind of knowing more about it, getting on it and paddling it. I'm far from understanding it completely, but I feel like I do know it just a little bit better. More education is always a good thing, and I want to personally invite all of you to come down here and get your own lesson on this beautiful big river. Oh, man, that was incredible. Hey, thank you, Tom. It was great. That was My excellent. pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah. Woo. Thank you so, so good. much. Dude, that was awesome. What Amazing. Is? Yeah. All right, man, but I am now starving, so we got to find some food. Okay, but I do have a place in mind. All right. Maybe a little Mexican food? <laughs> We're in Laredo, man. It's all, <laughs> everywhere has Mexican food. Right. That's pretty much true, but not everywhere has the kind of Mexican food we're about to enjoy at Las Quecas. You see, tucked inside this old house, you'll find a menu unlike any other in Texas. A list of regional dishes from across Mexico that's been carefully curated by owner and chef Nicolas Belicia. Would I offend you if I called this Tex-Mex? Yes, definitely. <laughs> Please don't do that. Yeah. What you're doing is really Mexican food. Thank you. Is it like a tour of the whole country of Mexico or just a region? Yes. No, 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 for real. I mean, we have plates from Monterey, a couple uh -huh. of them. We have plates from Guadalajara, Pozole Jalisciense, Southeast Mexico, the Mayan region. Yeah. So I pick up the thing that I like the best from this place <laughs> or yeah. this state. And I, that's how I create the menu. When I go out, what am I craving? So these are really dishes you can find one of two ways. You can grab a van and tour the Mexican countryside, a la Rick Bayless, or you can come to Las Quecas. And speaking of Quecas, well, it's not just this spot's name. It's also their signature dish. It's a fried quesadilla, basically. Okay. It's a raw con tortilla, and the dough is made really special. It has a three combination of different corn dolls. Okay. Only 21 different fillings. Only 21 yes. different fillings. From cochinita, <laughs> pibil, pork and bean sauce, cactus, zucchini blossom, with la coche, and I can, I can keep on going. <laughs> you, you're bringing us something new that we go, oh, why, where's this been my whole life? You yes. know? We know what we do. Mm. And we like what we do. Yeah. Oh, that speaks, I mean, that comes across through the food without a doubt. Thank you. Appreciate without it. Without a doubt. Time for Brandon and I to keck back and enjoy some dinner. Feast, brother. Feast. Ooh. Shrimp. Oh, let's have cactus. Cactus. You got cactus. <laughs> oh, that's good, man. This is awesome. That's really good. That's some of conchinita pibil. These are all good. Yeah. Oh, man. What's in this one? That's the poblado pepper. Okay. That one is good. It's corn stuff, but while it's kind of While you're you. talking, give it to the old pinch. Oh, there you go. A little pinch. Very unique. And huh? Very, yeah. Mm. Super good. Crazy good. I hate to almost say it, but I, I think I could be as happy with this for the rest of my life as any cheese enchilada. Que dia. In days of old, Texas was Mexico. Then it became Texas, and now in Laredo, well, it's a little bit of both. From its historia, to its comida, to its aventuras. More than just its river is grande, so are its day trips. So I will see all y'all out on the road. Bye con Dios, amigos. Seriously? You're going to do... You're, what? You're gonna it's my hometown, you, man. Yeah, I invite you on my show. I'm from and that's how you think. Paqueteria. What's a paqueteria? They sell paquets? Like what? Like ketchup packets? Now we're talking. But this one, don't plant anything in this. It, it will die. Just like the Aggies football seasons every year. You sure you don't what? want to talk about this, this one right now? I have no comment about this one right now. <laughs> Fun talking to you, Mr. Reporter Steves, man. I got to get back to my ladies. Oh. Oh, never mind. You're not a very good dancer. <laughs> uh, what is he, how does he, how does he finish? I just ran out, I totally ran out of steam. 
Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy, y'all. Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. <laughs> Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment. Let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas-made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, con Dios, amigas.